welcome to another installment of the NanoFab LEdit training video series. Uh, in this video, we are going to take a look at cells. So cells in LEdit are the basic building blocks of any design, and they can encompass anything from a single feature or primitive object up to and including your entire um, design, your entire floor plan. So when you open up LEdit for the first time, uh, you are going to be presented with cell zero. Cell zero is basically the default cell that LEdit creates every time it opens a new document. So let's go ahead and uh, get right into the idea of cells here. Now I just want to clarify that a cell can contain um, any number of features, it can also contain other cells, and it is used to build up the structure of your design. So um, let's just start by creating some features in our basic cell. Now I'm going to work around the origin here. Um, I'll explain in a little bit why that uh, is useful. It's not entirely necessary to place things on the origin as in LEDit things will be automatically centered um, as you move through your, through your design flow, but I'm going to just start with working on the origin out, out of a force of habit. So um, this cell right now can be considered complete. We're just going to create a simple box in the cell and that's going to be it. Now uh, the shortcut key, uh, key function F10 uh, if I hit the right one, function F10, it will basically tile your windows with your design navigator on the left and allow you to see uh, your current working cell on the right here. Um, it's pretty handy when you're working with cells you're going to spend a lot of time looking at the design navigator and um, so it, it, it's very useful to have here. So right now we see that our des design contains just cell 0. So let's go ahead and add a new cell. We can use the keyboard shortcut N or we can select it from the menu cell new and this is going to bring up our create a new cell dialog box. So let's just go ahead and uh, give our cell a name. Now when naming cells, just a quick uh, note here that you want to use uh, basically Unix naming conventions. So don't start with uh, numbers. We can't use things like minus, plus, arithmetic operators. And even spaces are kind of frowned upon. LEDit itself will automatically add underscores, but if you just get into the habit of um, using good naming conventions, you'll kind of avoid that feature. So let's go ahead and call this square 10 micron. And here we have a new cell. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place an instance of cell 0 into this 10 micron square. I probably should have named them the other way around, but that's okay. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut I, which is the same as pressing this cell instance icon here. Um, and that's going to bring up my instance cell dialog box. Now in this dialog box, um, we are going to be instancing cells from our current working file, which is layout 1. And we see the red X here indicating that we cannot instance square 10 micron, simply because that's the cell that we're working in, and that uh, we can't place a copy of ourselves inside of ourselves. Um, just going through the rest of the options in the dialog box here, we can also filter cells. So this is just simple text filtering. So if I wanted to just type cells here, I'll see everything else is going to disappear. Uh, this is a name that I can give to my instance. I'm going to go ahead and name this one square 10 micron. Is actually I'm going to just call it square array. And down here we also see reference type. Um, I'm going to come back to this one a little bit. Basically what this is is you can reference or instance cells from external files and this will basically determine the type of referencing that LEdit uses. Um, right now we're just going to work in a single design file so those are all grayed out. So um, okay good enough. Um, oh the show all cells sometimes certain cells can be hidden in the cell properties and we'll talk a little bit more about that in the future. But here we go we have placed an instance of cell 0 inside of our square 10 micron cell and we see now if we take a look at our design navigator that it indicates that square 10 micron contains an instance of cell 0. Um, so now what we can do is we can work with this cell to perform some useful functions. For example, if we want to create an array, I'm just gonna if we want to create an array we can hit control E We'll bring up our property edit object dialog box, and now we notice that since we have an instance selected, we get the instance tab. So here we see the name that we gave to our instance. We see which cell we are referencing. Uh, we can change that here if we wanted to. And now we can do some other stuff. We can rotate the cell. 
mirror it. We can move it, so this is basically the uh, location of the cell. We can scale it. This is a factor, so this is sitting at 1 over 1. Uh, so if we wanted to double it, we would go 2 over 1, or we can half it by going 1 over 2. And these uh, options here allow us to array our cell in the x and y directions. And the delta features specify how far away to place the next copy of the instance in our array. By default, it's going to be set to the width and height of the cell so that our objects, when we create an array, for example, if we create a 10 by 10 array, they'll be abutted together. So we will end up with uh, one large square if we were to fabricate this. So if we wanted to select it and we hit Control E, we can add, for example, some spacing. If we wanted to add a 5 micron space between each of our instances, or between each of our uh, features here, we would go ahead and just change that to 1515. And now what we are, what we end up with is uh, our 10 micron square with 5 micron gap between all of them. Now the nice thing about using instances is if I need to make any changes to my design, um, all those changes are going to be reflected through my entire design hierarchy. So what that means is if I was to, I'll just jump back into my design navigator, oops, we'll, we'll go like this. Uh, so we're going to cell 0 here. So now if we were to change the cell, for example, um, let's say we added some sort of pad over top of it on a different layer. When we go back, we see that, that those changes have been made and applied to all of the instances of that cell. Okay, so that is the very, very basic uh, of cells. Some of the other things that we can do with cells, if we wanted to place another copy of cell 0, we can do that, and we'll just put that here. And I'm going to just point out a little bit about uh, creating your cells on the origin. So when I created the cell, I placed the bottom corner on the origin, and basically what that affects is if I was to uh, scale this, uh, for example, I wanted to double the size. In this case, it's going to stay exactly where it was uh, because I placed it on the on the origin. However, if you had some offset uh, where you placed your cell, so I'm just going to delve down. I just pop down into cell zero here, and it's actually not the way I want to do this. Let's go into cell zero. And if we were to move everything off the origin, say we move it 10 microns off the origin, and we go back here, and if we perform that same operation now to scale this cell, say we scaled it by five times, in this case it jumped off of our screen. Now the reason it jumped is because the offset scaled as well. So the offset from the origin also scaled and our and our cell popped way over here. Now the reason that that may or may not be important is if you scale your cell by a large value and it jumps way out of your design area, you can end up with stray elements way off outside here and thus causing the size of your mask. Uh, to be much larger than it actually is. So when you submit your mask for fabrication, it creates errors because you have stray elements. So it's just it's just something to keep in mind. Um, as long as you're aware of it, it's it's not a problem. So if we just uh, we'll leave that at five five, and if we looked now into our design navigator, we see that our ten micron square contains two instances of cell zero. So, um, some other things about cells. Let's take a good look at our design navigator here now. So the design navigator has a few options in it. And one of them is the view. By default, it's uh, top down all cells. So what that means is it's going to show all cells in your design alphabetically. Um, some of the other views are bottom up. Um, so top down basically shows the cells in terms of instances that they contain. So a little plus sign here indicates that this cell 
contains cell zero. If we go bottom up, it's the opposite. So this displays all cells in terms of where they are instanced. So now we see that cell zero is actually instanced in the square 10 micron cell twice. So it's, it's the opposite logic. It's bottom up. Um, the other options are top-down, non-instanced. So what this shows is this shows only the cells that have not been instanced in another cell. Um, so now we only see the 10 micron cell and we see, only see cell zero when we expand this. Um, this one can be kind of a cleaner looking display if you don't want to see all of the cells um, or you only want to see them in the hierarchy where they belong. By date modified, just shows our cells with the most recently modified cell on the top. And DRC status, we don't uh, perform DRCs, but this will just list the cells according to their DRC status. In this case, no DRCs have been run on any of these. Uh, so these other buttons here, we can collapse all or expand all of our cells. We can create new cells. Uh, if we have a cell selected, we could delete cells. Now I can't delete cell 0 because it's instanced inside of square, but if I delete square, 10 micron cell, um, I'll still be left with cell 0. Copy to text view will copy my hierarchy into a text file that I can use to reference later on. And show all cells um, will sh display, <clears throat> basically reset you back to the default view. So right-clicking a cell in the Design Navigator brings up your um, cell operations menu. And in here, if we look at info, we can see some extra information about the cell. You can define the author, author organization or some information, um, some arbitrary information about the cell. Uh, LEDIT also keeps track of version numbers and it will increment version numbers each time a cell is saved. You can manually increment the, ma the major versions by pressing increment and that will jump up the major, uh, the major version numbers. Uh, this here, this show in lists, this is the way that um, cells can be hidden. So if this box is unchecked, now this cell will no longer show up in the instancing lists um, and in very uh, uh, and so when we try to instance it, we won't see it. There is a way to check that show all cells button, and we'll see it that way. Um, if we lock the cell, we're no longer able to edit it. Uh, the default view is layout. If we did have a T cell with some sort of code in it, we could uh, choose to display the text by default. And we have some DRC options, which again we'll uh, we're we're not going to touch upon in this video. Below that, uh, we have xref, so if this cell was referenced from an external file, that would be indicated here, and we'll, uh, we'll do that in a second. Um, we don't have any t-cell parameters. And custom properties, this is getting a little bit advanced, we don't necessarily get into any of this, but you can define custom properties for cells, uh, that would be something that would be more useful in t-cells. Okay, so that is the design navigator. So we'll go ahead and pop that guy back in place. And let's take a look at uh, referencing external cells. So if we had a second design opened, uh, let's just go ahead. So if we had a second design uh, opened, what we can do is we can actually instance uh, I suppose I need to be in a cell, so let's create a new cell here. Let's call it xref. And I'm going to instance a cell from an external file. So now on uh, my file list, I'm going to choose LithoTest. And let's see, it doesn't really matter which one we pick, but we'll just oops, go ahead and pick one of the lower level cells here. And now down here, we see that we can either copy the current cell or copy the cell to our current working file, or we can create an external reference. I would recommend that you copy the cell to the current file, unless you have a specific reason to reference an external cell. Um, just keep in mind that if you do leave it as an external reference, you do need to have both design files available um, to you at all times. So in any event, um, we will go ahead and create this as an external reference. 
And right now we have a conflict resolution box that came up. Now this can come up in a couple of instances. This can happen if you have duplicate names. If the cell name that you're trying to instance from the external file is already being used in your current file, you'll have to get a conflict. In this case we have a layer conflict because the cell in the external file has a uh, different layer palette. So it was on poly zero. So what we'll do is we're just going to map that layer to layer one. layer one and okay so now what we've done is we have instanced this cell from an external file and if we look at our design navigator we see that uh, the cell that we instance from the external file is shown with this link icon so this icon here indicates that this cell is in an external file and we actually brought in two cells we brought in channel one and text one because text one is the number one here that is used in channel one as well the other thing that we note is that we see here litho test in blue and this is actually the external file that we are referencing so now in our design navigator we also can see that external file and all of the cells that are contained within it giving us access to those um, cells as well so that is um, instancing a cell from an external file. It's not something that I would necessarily recommend that you do, but it is a feature that is available in the system um, itself. So um, a couple of final notes on cells then just before we wrap up here. Um, some of the other things that you can do with them if you have a uh, new cell. Um, if you want, you can also instance by dragging and dropping out of your <clears throat> design navigator and you can also create arrays just holding down the middle button um, if you're close to the edge of the cell you can just create arrays by holding and dragging and dropping that way as well um, boolean operations if you want to perform boolean operations it's something we haven't touched upon yet but that does not work on cells you have to do that on primitive objects themselves um, you can also lock cells um, if you lock a cell, uh, you will also be locking all of the cells that are instanced within that cell. And I think that just about wraps it up for cells themselves. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for future videos on some other topics.